Hey guys, on today's video we are going to be going over Trinmere Jungle. So I want to go over the runes, the typical jungle path, and your general strategy uh, while playing Trinmere Jungle. That way you can maximize uh, his efficiency and his strength in the jungle role. Uh, first thing, we're going to take that plant just so we get that 5% uh, bonus fury. We're going to let Nasus tank the first auto, and then we're going to tank since he has lifesteal. It just makes sense. And typically with jungle trainer, you want to do a full clear. And the reason why we do a full clear is along with our runes, which I'll go over now. By the way, when you do these Krugs, always do the big Krug. Uh, do the big Krug, do the little Krugs. Then when you're starting on the two medium Krugs, auto attack spin through. Uh, make sure you Q before that, that way you generate your fury back. And you generally want to do it like this. So this is ideal. Keep your fury for the raptors. Anyway, so my runes are Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Bloodline, Last Stand, Futures Market, Approach Velocity. When you do these raptors, make sure you bring them into the brush. That way you take a little bit of damage. Or take as little damage as possible. Because as you've probably seen already, with Trimmer Jungle, you take a lot of damage early on. And you want to take, you want to make sure you take enough damage where you're making use of Trinmere's Q. Uh, the lower health you are, the more attack damage you get. So you want to make sure you're getting as much attack damage as possible uh, for as fast a clear as possible. But I believe it is also important to um, make sure you don't die. Or uh, if J4 walks my jungle right now, do I insta die if he like ease me? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, let's go ahead and do blue. Save our uh, smite for blue. Just because uh, blue buff is... I believe it's the only buff um, on the first clear that has armor. So let's go ahead and do the scuttle crab. Then do gromp. And once we've done a complete full clear, this is where the futures market comes in. Once we have done a complete full clear, including the scuttle, so you need one scuttle plus all of your camps. Once you've done a full clear, uh, you will have Tiamat on your first back, which is awesome for hard farming. And pretty much for Trinmere, you want to be basically just hard farming early on. Sucks that they're casting out a kill. Oh man, and it's frozen. Diana's in a rough spot. But yeah, see, we don't have enough for Tiamat right now. But as soon as we get to 1,010 gold, that's when we have enough for team out, so we have just enough to get team on our first back. Uh, team out is a really strong early game item for Trinmere as well as you know for jungle Trinmere. Uh, it allows you to clear really fast. Okay, we saw that coming. There's not much we can do for him except get herself strong, so that we can uh, make it worthwhile that uh, we didn't do an early game. Oh no. Kassin is flaming the Diana for poor wave management. Feels bad, man. Okay, let me see if I can help out Nasus. There's a good chance that um, J4 comes up for a gank. Or a dive. But if I could get there first, I have approach velocity. Can I soul kill him? I'll take it. And let's push his wave in. So that his wave isn't screwed up. Damn, J4 is just camping mid. But yeah, the only uh, times I will go for a gank is if it looks absolutely free, like the guy's just overextending like crazy. Uh, or if it's like, uh, if I have a really good chance to counter a gank. Oh man. Mid is looking rough. Especially feeding a cast in early. That sounds like a sign of trouble. Alright, let's go ahead and... Damn, Kassin's talking shit to this guy. It feels bad. 
I really want to help out my Dana, but I don't want to set myself behind while doing it. Because I may be the answer to carry this game. With a uh, Fed Cassidy. In. All right, nice. So J4 didn't take the scuttle crab yet, so we do have uh, room to take this here. Uh, the bot lane just went back, taking a scuttle, and then I could do Gromp into red buff. I could have saved that plant actually to gank bot lane. That uh, eh. I'm so worth. Got me to my gromp like three seconds faster. Faster clear is always worth. In fact, uh, we need it back anyways because we want to get Zerker Greaves. So that way we have more move speed for ganks. I think the easiest lane for us to gank in this game is going to be the Nasus Rumble lane. Because Rumble is going to be pushing in to try to uh, do work on the Nasus, which leaves him overextended. And Nasus has really good CC with the Wither. To slow him down while I beat him up. So let's take this plant. Usually it's bad to leave your red buff up for so long. But J4 is a spam gank jungle. He really doesn't um he really doesn't invade unless he just has a substantial lead. Which I don't think he does, even though he got those two early ganks. Uh, I am pretty far ahead in experience, I would imagine. Just because Chinra can farm really hard after the first clear. I'm gonna sit here in case he has a ward. Ah, J4 is here. But he has no flash, right? Nice! We actually got both of them. Feels good, man. Nasus call me a psycho. You just don't know, man. All right, so let's just back. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, let's just back. I was thinking about just going and doing a full clear, but I think we just go buy items. Uh, with approach velocity, the reason why I like taking inspiration seconds on uh, jungle Chinmere, compared to top lane Chinmere, is I really like, one, the futures market for the early team at, off of a full clear, so you don't have to rely on getting an early kill. And number two, I really like approach velocity to stick on the Atari. Like, you saw how easy it was for me to stick on the Rumble, uh, because of my red buff uh, working with approach velocity. It was super nice. Okay, guys, flash. Please look to shove the wave in for Diana. If you notice, I am taxing lanes quite a bit, and it's intentional. You want to have as much, you just want to just stack yourself with gold and experience as much as possible. Obviously, I'm not griefing Diana there. Um, I am taxing his lane, yes, but I'm helping him push in so he can get a recall because he doesn't want to stay in lane. Uh, especially with the wave like pushed all the way up like that, right? But yeah, the big, big focus is for us to farm and to take free ganks whenever we see it. We never have to force anything, remember. Uh, biggest thing about Trinmer Jungle is just farming. Let me put a ward here. Oh, shit. Wait. <laughs> Wait, he's mad! Wait, approach velocity? Oh, yes, baby. Oh, yeah, he's so mad. <laughs> Wait, that was just really lucky. I was I was pink warding so that I could maybe do it myself. But, uh, yeah, I think I think J4 is having a rough one. That was bad. I just came down to get the skull crap. I wasn't even trying to, like, check dragon or nothing. Feels good, man. Okay. Let's look to dive. Okay, no, she's just dead. Okay, let's look to get some plates. Even though I didn't gank, 
going to look to push in and tax. Try to get as many plates and gold as possible. We can also dive. He threw the lantern too early. I could have gotten another play if he threw it a little bit later. But oh well. Let's go ahead and grab Warrior. So the reason why I like grabbing Warrior is the really high flat attack damage and CDR it gives. Uh, next time we're going to build is an SM Cheever. Uh, we don't, we didn't have enough for um, Cloak of Agility. Uh, oh, we could have bought a Longsword. Hold up, I'm trolling. So, we could have bought a Longsword. My bad. I realize that now. But we didn't have enough for Cloak. Um, I think we actually get here in time to counter this. Rumble backed all the way off. Let's go and take plates. Maybe stop Rumble's back again. Oh, he has Phase Rush? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, he has Phase Rush to counter Nastus' Wither? Oh. I didn't pay attention to that in the first time, two times I killed him. Maybe he just didn't proc it. Either way, I'm going to take a couple plates. And then I have my whole jungle to full clear. We're actually going to be really strong in this game. Even if I didn't get early like kills like this, just making sure you consistently farm out your jungle whenever possible will enable you to get an advantage no matter what. Unless the enemy jungle is just, like, your laners are just basically inting them. Which, I mean, does happen from the time to time. Okay, let's do full clear. Oh man, bot lane's getting, getting worked. So my bot and mid again worked. It's only me and top lane who are fed. And I'm insanely fed. Let me cover mid. I get the approach velocity move speed, which is kind of nice. And I saved the Kai'Sa. Maybe shove out this wave. Just get this all the way into turret. And really strong. Mountain is in a minute. So, Trinmere Jungle is a little bit of a greedy jungler. Uh, yeah, as you've seen, uh, it's kind of like Master Yi or like, ain't you? like where you're just looking to get yourself as strong as possible because you're a hyper carry. Uh, I personally think that Trinmere is a little bit safer uh, than Master Yi in terms of um, you know farming up early just because Trinmere has mobility, Master Yi doesn't. Um, Trinmere isn't hyper carry as hard as like a Master Yi can, but I think he's a little bit more consistent. Which in my opinion makes him a little bit better. So if you're looking to compare jungles with like, uh, maybe like a Master Yi jungle or something, I personally like Trinmere over Master Yi. Okay. We have Essence Reaver completely, so let's just buy it straight up. And we'll buy Essence Reaver, go do blue, and then maybe secure Mountain. So I bought Essence Weaver with the uh, Futures Market. Uh, Thresh messed up his combo. Ok, 
Okay, I got dunked, but... And J4 got a shutdown, but I think this Nasus is about to go huge. Okay, maybe not. Well, I got the dragon at least. Wait. Oh! My Nasus don't work, actually. How many... I need to check how many stacks he's got. He's, uh... He's killing it. Okay, let's grab this Cloak of Agility. So, something I do like doing on Jungle Trinmer is just going full on attack damage, relying on um, attack speed coming from my Lethal Tempo activation and Zerker Greaves to give me enough attack speed, but just uh, hitting people with big crits. It just seems natural for me to do this because uh, what attack speed I'm going to get like a Stinger for 40% CDR. But I don't really want to build Trinity Force because then I'll overcap on CDR, right? And I don't have Transcendent, so it doesn't um, doesn't really translate uh, into anything extra. It's just 10% wasted CDR. The last 10% CDR I like getting is Death Dance. Oh, this guy's all nine. Oh, I... Okay. I missed the spin on Rakan. That sucked. Oh, no. This game's going, like, out of hand really quickly. Damn, that was a big mistake for me. Let's do a bottom to top clear. That way we can um, get all these camps and then get the red buff as it spawns. Um, maybe we can get Rift Herald as well. Although, it seems like they have pressure absolutely everywhere. J4 does have a lot of assists. Yeah. We just gotta go for a full 1v9 mode. I think we just gotta take a lane from somebody. And take over this game. And then <laughs> convert them into like a support role. I don't know. Like the like this Diana, I don't know if uh, giving farm over to her is uh, gonna be any good. Maybe just having all that Lane's farm on me would be a little bit better. And all they have to do is buy time for me to split, and I win versus everybody. Yeah, I'll do red buff into Herald. So something you've see, probably uh, noticed that I've been doing throughout this whole game is that in between camps, or even while I'm doing a camp, I'm constantly scouting around the map. Getting the information absorbed can really help you, uh, you know, make the correct decisions. Which can in turn lead to a better game. I got um, the enhanced recall, so I can just back here. Is he alright? No, he probably just dies. Oh, nice. One for one. Not bad. Okay, we're pretty far behind. We really have to carry this hard. Holy. My Diana just like gave J4 like three free ganks mid to get a big lead. Uh, I don't want to run into them with an ulti. I also want to make sure I'm farming efficiently. Something you can do as well on jungle chin is you can do Baron super early. Okay, let's go, let's work bottom. I'm gonna push out bottom, force a rotation, and then I'm gonna look to maybe make a five versus four play mid. Shut down.
Okay. We're doing some pretty good work. We have more kill participation than the J4. And we've been, like, doing a lot of hard farming, right? Uh, let me work with Nasus here to take this turret. I don't have ulti though, so I don't want to force any big fight. Oh shit. Okay, he didn't have ulti. Good. If he had ulti, maybe I'd get caught out there. Let me go grab Infinience. And then I'll split top. We need to make sure we keep getting wards on Baron. We don't want them to sneak it. Especially with me being four levels ahead of the enemy jungler. Which is, happens quite a bit in jungle Trinmere. Um, You just get like levels and levels ahead. It's about the impact you have with those levels though that makes a difference. So the only... Things that probably outfarm a Trinmere, if the Trinmere is playing well, is probably like a cane or something. Not much really outfarms him besides that. Or maybe like a maybe like a Shivana. I'm not sure, but Trinmere is definitely the best like hyper carry out of the options available. At least in my opinion. I might be a little bit biased because I'm a Trinmere main, but from my experience, that just seems to be the best option. Oh, I couldn't click it. I was CC'd the whole time. But I think my team does pretty well off that. Well done, team. Oh! Okay, maybe my Thresh got a little bit eager. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he's got this. Okay, no, he didn't. And my Nasus 1v1 the Kassadin. That's a really good sign. He got that Spirit Visage. Because he is getting some magic damage during the matchup early. I like what I'm seeing. I can solo Baron right now. I have a Mountain and two Oceans. Along with the Lifesteal coming from my Warrior. I have Lifesteal coming from Bloodline. And I just have Lifesteal from Fan Scepter. So, let's go and do it. I'm not even going to tell my team that I want to do it. I'm just going to do it. Actually, I will. Because I want them to push mid. You guys see these big crits I'm hitting one with? Isn't that ridiculous? Man, I love this build. Like, you don't have as much attack speed, but damn, those crits hurt. Okay, so I have Rakan. Let's look to flank them. If he didn't have Fan Dancer, my, uh, my auto one-shot him there. Okay, let's just do this. I think we won the game off that play. So I was just looking to do Baron. Uh, Rumble is greeting to get this pink ward and uh, punish him for it. And that pink ward that I bought got us so many picks. Okay, I'm just going to push out a lane. I was thinking about just doing Krugs, but like when you got Baron, you don't want to just sit there and do full clears. You want to do something with it. The only time you do a full clear while you have Baron is if um, maybe some of your team died while doing Baron or something and you can't force yet. Then do a full clear back by items and 
And then pressure. Once your team's all up and ready. Oh no. Damn! Okay, they sent all five. <laughs> I'm gonna say worth though. Alright, let's get um let's get Death Dance. Let's get that last 10% CDR that we need. We got Quad Dragon, I got the turret, and I got G4. I think I got um I think I got ulti from Rakan as well. Wait, the Rakan has a Zonya. Interesting. So, Rakan is building AP. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay, we need to work this split again. Now that I have Death Dance, uh, we should definitely be able to... 1v2 or even 1v3 that situation. I don't know about 1v5, so I could just try doing it, but eh, we can, maybe we can try it. Um, one concern with this build is that you don't have um, armor pen, as you probably see, uh, but you do just crush squishies. What I can do is I can sell my team up, and if I feel like I need armor pen, I can get a um, I can get rage blade, which give me attack speed, or I can get a lord doms for extra pen if they're just heavily stacked on armor. But for the most part with Trin Mirror, when you fight, you are mostly looking to pick out the squishies anyways. But in this game, like, looks like the uh, Zaya is probably going to go um, Tabbies and maybe even a GA. I've got a Zanyas on two people, um, potentially even a third later on. Are you serious? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I I thought my team was tanking it for me. I guess they weren't. That's unfortunate. Something else you could do, you could just um, use your gold and buy a Ravenous Hydra. So this is a full build. You can go uh, Rage Blade, you can go Dumbs. But this is essentially how you want to play Trinmere Jungle. Um, yeah. Ugh. So, I was reading a couple of the comments on YouTube, and I want to make sure I respond to a couple of them. So, um, at the end of these kinds of videos that I record off stream, I do want to uh, talk about myself a little bit. That way, you guys get to know me as a person. Um, let's give it to, uh, let's give it to Nasus. Anyways, so on yesterday's video, the um, insane 1v9 backdoor in challenger 1v9 carry, if you haven't seen that, make sure you watch it. But anyways, um, at the end of the video, I asked if people wanted to ask me a few questions um, about my personal life, and I'll answer it um, on the video, so that's what I'm going to do now. So around 999 people, he had a lot of questions. But first one, how do you balance your personal life and work? Um, honestly, my personal life is hanging out with Emmy, her family, and um, you know having uh, trips to Disney World, which we've done a couple times this year already. Or just maybe taking a uh, weekend off. Like this weekend, we went to a cabin in Bryson City. And we went tubing down the river, which is pretty fun. But for the most part, I'm just working nonstop, nonstop. Um, probably close to about 12 hours a day. Um, with streams, sponsorships, you, uh, you know, recording stuff off stream for YouTube. 
um, talking with my YouTube manager, Professor Akali, um, giving him, you know, feeding him ideas. Or he's telling me, like, hey, record this video. It could be really good for YouTube. Why not? Um, anyways, beyond that, um, I work, I work, I work, and then I take, like, a few days off where I go on a little trip. And that's basically how I've been doing it so far. Um, anytime off stream where I have free time for myself, I usually spend it um, working out, going for walks, playing with the dogs. Um, I've been playing on the Nintendo Switch a little bit. And then sometimes I just um, play some games off stream with friends online. Um, second question, how do you power through that first hurdle where your channel is too small to be anything but a time sink? I tried YouTube ages ago, but my school and personal life killed it because it didn't feel like it was worth the hours I put in for those 10 views. Well, for me, I was just absolutely blessed. I, um, one, I was even, I didn't even, you know, plan on being a streamer or anything at all. I worked at a call center. I worked my nine to five. I went home and I played League of Legends and I just happened to be a master tier streamer player. You know, I'd gone master tier with a couple other champions, Gangplank and Ramus. Um, but I was a lot better at Trimmer than those two champions. Um, and I kind of got known in Halo community for playing Trimmer. Um, then, um, one of Boxer Pete's friends, well, uncle, uh, reached out to me and said, hey, you should stream. I would love to watch you. And he seemed like a really nice guy. Um, also, like a couple other friends had, uh, had been wanting me to stream. So I went ahead and started my stream. I started with the Trinimer Mains um, Discord, I think, is where my first few viewers came from. And then I uh, made connections with Boxer Pete, Good Guy Gary, Anybot, Skara. I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, Stevens, Demir. So I, I had a couple connections with other streamers in the Hilo community. And uh, they all helped me get started. So I'm really thankful um, for all of them helping me get started. I think most notably, uh, Good Guy Gary's audience and Boxer Pete's audience had a um, huge influence early on to my stream. And within a month... I, would, I went from like the 5 to 15 viewers to um, about 100 to 150. And that I kind of worked from there. So the first hurdle is really just about connecting with the right people, interacting with people on their Twitch channels, and, you know, not asking for hosts, uh, but streaming actively at a time when, you know, people could potentially host you or like maybe have your... Uh, friends host you or whatnot. Uh, what's your home life like? You mentioned her family, so I mentioned Emily's family a lot, but not my own. Well, I currently live in Tennessee, and my family lives in Austin, Texas. Um, I visited them for the 4th of July, and we went to a lake house, actually. And we spent five days at a lake house, which is really fun. And we also saw the... Um, uh, group Chicago uh, while I was in Austin as well. Um, if you mean home life, like, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I'm assuming you're talking about, like, my family, right? I have, uh, I have two brothers, and then I have my dad, my mom, and then my stepmom. And then I have a stepbrother and a stepsister as well. Um, and then I got another question. You watched the whole video. Personal question. Have you ever struggled with any type of addiction uh, to something at some point in your life? Congratulations to the weight loss. Uh, on the weight loss. Um, I answered this on uh, written, but basically I did have a video game addiction where video games became more than just a hobby. It kind of consumed me. And it, uh, I had struggles with my work, like making it work on time because I... I remember, um, I remember spending most of the night staying up to like four in the morning, 
um, playing video games, and I had to work at, at 9. And so I usually had to wake up at like 8. And I remember having this constant fear that I was going to sleep through my alarm. And the anxiety of like staying up and then re like realizing, oh shit, if I, if I go to sleep, then I'm going to go sleep through my alarm and miss work. It, it just it rattled me. I had issues with that. I had issues with sugar addiction and caffeine addiction, which I think most people have, to be honest. I think most people are addicted to sugar and caffeine. But I, you know, I was drinking a bunch of Mountain Dews and all that, so that's, that's never good. So it's bad. But anyways, so I answered a few questions on the, um, on the YouTube comments. Um, if you guys have more questions about my life or maybe around 999 people, if you want to specify exactly what you meant, um, if you watch this video, um, please let me know. Um, I would love to talk to you guys more about my personal life. I want to spend three to five minutes at the end of each video. Um, just letting you guys get to know who I am and uh, where I came from and whatnot. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You'll get more content like this. And I'll be seeing you guys on the next video. All right, bye-bye.